Now, I have my own prejudices and preconceptions, and the great thing about making Trust Me films is they are often challenged by the facts. Now, at the moment, there is one subject that I am really passionate about, and I'm dying to get to the bottom of. Until seven years ago, it was quite normal to see people smoking away in restaurants and pubs. Then it was banned. Now, cigarettes in public places are making something of a comeback, albeit with a twist. This is vaping. Using an electronic cigarette to produce a nicotine-rich vapor instead of burning tobacco. But are they bad for you? In the last two years alone, the number of people using them has trebled to over two million. They're legal inside most public buildings, and you can even see people vaping in offices. The debates rage about their possible effects on our health. It's a very emotive subject, so I want to look at the evidence from a medical point of view. The first thing to understand is that smoking and vaping are very different. Smoking burns tobacco to release a large dose of addictive nicotine very quickly. But nicotine's not the major problem. Alongside it comes a cocktail of around 4,000 toxic chemicals, increasing the risk of cancer, heart disease, and other serious illnesses. Electronic cigarettes heat up a cartridge of liquid to form a vapor, which can be inhaled instead of smoke. This vapor contains a nicotine hit, along with flavorings and other chemicals. In the UK, there are plans to regulate some e-cigarettes, depending on the nicotine content and the claims made for them. This should ensure tighter controls on what they contain. Now, the manufacturers of e-cigarettes obviously claim that they are much safer than normal cigarettes. But are they? We thought it would be interesting to test normal cigarette smokers and those who use e-cigarettes and find out exactly what's going on inside their bodies. We've taken samples of saliva, urine and breath from a range of vapors and a group of smokers. And we've done the same test to look at the risks of passive vaping. First, nicotine levels. We found the vapors get a similar dose of nicotine to smokers. Now for the test on the real nasties. Carbon monoxide, associated with heart disease, and acrolin, associated with cancer and lung problems. Here, the vapors had significantly lower levels, similar to those found in non-smokers. As for the risk from passive vaping, our test found no evidence that the vapor was affecting people nearby. Despite the evidence from our small-scale tests and other bigger studies, I still can't quite get rid of my gut feeling that because cigarettes are so harmful, there might be some hidden dangers lurking in e-cigarettes. Professor Peter Hayek, director of the Tobacco Dependence Research Unit at Queen Mary University of London, has been looking into e-cigarettes in detail. Electronic cigarettes have only been around for a short while. Is there some long-term risks we are not aware of? Uh, I think we can't exclude it altogether. I suppose some of the flavorings in e-cigarettes may turn up to be uh, a danger. There may be risks for some people with lung issues. I think they are unlikely. If there is a danger, it's likely to be a small fraction of a danger of smoking. What about the addictive qualities of nicotine? Because obviously they're still getting nicotine, they're not getting the other toxins. Are there dangers associated with that? There are. Nicotine is an addictive substance, and the proportion of people who use nicotine will become hooked. Uh, a lot of people drink coffee, right? You've got a <laughs> coffee cup yes. in front of you. Indeed. I've got one. Yeah. A lot of people are hooked on coffee and nicotine use would be roughly in the same category if there were no other toxic chemicals which accompany it. Do you think that e-cigarettes are a big change? I think they could be a revolutionary change. I think they have a potential to basically eradicate smoking-related disease and death on the population scale. What I've seen and heard in making this film is beginning to make me rethink my opinion about e-cigarettes. But their effects on our body are only part of the picture. There are fears that allowing widespread use of e-cigarettes would make the consumption of nicotine an everyday sight again, 
Already there are stories of children as young as 11 trying them. The British Medical Association is calling for a ban in public places. Now, I do agree that you need to be very cautious about anything that makes it easier to consume an addictive drug like nicotine. But considering cigarettes kill half the people who use them, if I was a cigarette smoker, I'd certainly give.